and we couldn't have come over to my charts at a better time because David was looking at the Euro Aussie, um, seeing um, that uh, a potential reversal setting up. And whilst he was looking at that, I had uh, I stayed with the pound Aussie, as I said, I carried on the narrative from uh, yesterday. And it's done, it really hasn't done what you've been seeing on uh, the Euro Aussie. And I think uh, the best way to look at it, first of all, is to see on the this chart here where we have the, um, uh, what I've done is I've put the CSI at the bottom of the chart and just taken out all the other currencies except for the pound and the Aussie that we see here. Now, obviously, uh, generally speaking, in the market, the pound has has been selling off, as we can see that from the uh, from the, the fall in the line, and the uh, the 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 Aussie has also. But what has happened in this particular pair, because they have been moving in the same direction in this time frame, what that has resulted in is actually a congestion phase. So while the Euro Aussie uh, has been has been in a trend, has been you've had divergence in that pair, we haven't got the divergence at the moment for uh, the, the pound Aussie. And what's interesting is we can see that it's congestion, congesting around uh, the, uh, the R2 level, as we see around 82.55. If we look at the three minute chart, we've actually got a really nice uh, uh, example here of a congestion, uh, Wyckoff's uh, second law. The longer this stays in this congestion phase, then when we do have uh, the break, it is going to be, you know, is likely to move very, 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 very nicely. Now, this this brings us to, David mentioned earlier that, you know, there's, there's two ways you basically have to decide whether you want to wait for a reversal opportunity or do you wait for a, a break and a, and a congestion? Because at the end of the day, we are all looking for a move in a, some kind of trend. Now, those trends come from reversals or after a congestion phase. Now, it's important to understand how and why price moves. And it's important because this is a market, you know, this is a continuum. The market opened on Sunday night, it will close again on Friday night. And during that time, it, you will have these oscillations. There isn't a, there isn't a sort of a begin. The, the beginning is is that the it, you know it picks up the point on Sunday and it stops on 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 Friday night. So what we're constantly having to do is having to look at potential uh, potential jump jumping in points and jumping out uh, points. And the way we do this is if you understand how the price moves on a chart in the sense that you have you have a trend you have a reversal you have these pause points you have these congestion phases and you as a trader have to do and once you understand that and you understand Wyckoff's three laws which we explain in our in our on our in our program you can then decide well what kind of price action actually suits me what do I like to look for on a chart do I like to see these 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 big divergences in uh, in the currencies, which is where the, the CSI comes in. And we can see here, by divergences, I mean when they've had a big move either to the upside or the downside. And we're looking for these, if you like, major potential reversals. But before they get to those points, they have these, these staging posts, these, these stopping off points, these congestion phases. And the congestion phases themselves, certainly if they, these, the, uh, these sideways movements, Especially on the on the on the slower time frames, on the higher time frames, they can actually uh, produce reversals in faster time frames. It's 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 it, you think about it in the way of a Russian doll. If you if you look at a Russian doll, you have uh, they're all very they're, they're self similar. So you have a big one, and then you open the dolls up, and they're all identical as they move as you move into the slow into the into the smallest one right at the bottom. And that is what you get with uh, uh, with price action. So you may see a congestion phase maybe on a daily chart or a four hour chart or even on an hourly chart but if you're trading down on the five minute the three minute the, the even the 10 minute chart within that within that uh, uh, oscillation on the higher time frame will be a reversal opportunity in uh, the faster time frame. Now, the reason I would just want to show the the CSI on the hourly. This is this is great. It's great to see uh, these these divergences. We know we've had a big move. You may have missed it. 
probably asleep, but that doesn't matter. So you know a reversal is potentially setting up. But with this, uh, yesterday was a really, it was a very tricky day yesterday. There were moves, but when the CSI is in this, if you see here, they all bunched in the middle. Um, it can be very frustrating. So the CSI not only highlights trades, but it also tells you, the, if you like, the condition of the price action that you are likely to face. And when you see all these lines clustered in the middle like this, there is movement, but it's not going very far. And, as, and if they're moving in the same direction, you know, it is patience is required. You may not get a divergence. You may see a lot of congestion. And, um, you know, it, it, it will trend, but it will be a trend where there will be a lot of uh, pause points, then it will carry on and then it will pull back. And those are the sorts of days which can be, as I said, very, uh, very frustrating. And if you add volatility to that, unexpected volatility or, you know, volatility in reaction to a news release, it can, you know, that can make the frustration uh, even greater. If we look at the three minute chart here for uh, the, uh, the pound Aussie, we are still in this congestion. The move was actually from about 82 and just pull up the, um, go back to my MT5, where are we here, pound Aussie, right, let's have a look here. Um, the, this morning's move certainly was a, from about 81, 82, and this is the, this is the move higher until we've, uh, you know, to the point where we've had this congestion. This is the Renko. This is set at a fixed three pip value. But what the Renko does, it helps to smooth out the the, the pullbacks, the, the the choppiness, if you like, of, uh, of of the trend. You know, you can get smooth trends, you can get choppy trends, you can get volatile trends. And I always urge traders, by all means, look at multiple time frames. But you must consider putting a a non time based chart into your into your uh, analysis and what the Renko does it takes away the choppiness and as David said it helps us it helps you stay in that particular move as you can see a very nice move higher but look at the number of times where we had a little pullback we had a little pullback we had a little pullback and another one and another one before we went into this congestion phase which we are in at the moment and what this what the Renko also helps us to do is that if this is going to go higher and we know we know the levels according to our, uh, our Camarilla calculation is where this is likely to be going through if if once it moves out of this congestion phase so yes you might have missed this here but the beauty of congestion phases is that they they are these stopping off points and they will then help to signal whether the move is going to come to a, a halt and then reverse or in fact is there more potential to the upside and this is where as I said patience is required if we go back to the actual levels themselves it's around the R2 we know if it if it's going to go further it's going to go to the R3 and then ultimately this is the key upside level in this particular time frame which is the R4 we can look at the hourly chart and see well how does that correspond well the R1 is at, let me have a look 82 82 go back to the 10 minute 82 82 we've got 82 77 uh as I, that's too far up so so basically we stick with the r3 and then possibly the r4 up here as well now by having the csi at the bottom what this tells us is basically the divergence hasn't happened yet certainly on this time frame we can go down to the three minutes what's happening here they're both what does that tell you? At the moment, they're both moving in the same direction, but one of them is you are going to get a divergence, but we have to wait. But by putting the CSI at the bottom, having the levels, having the Renko, we go back to the Renko here, this will go in and out because it's picking up the price action. It, you know, you, it, 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 it works in real time. And this is still bright blue. We've had this little uh, in, into dark red, but it's still wanting to hold on. But until we see this, this firm move in one direction or the other, we just have to be patient and, and wait for the market to decide whether we are going to see uh, uh, one of them, as I said, is it going to be uh, 
more buying of the uh, of the uh, of the British pound and perhaps more selling of the Aussie. Now, even if you see the Aussie down here at the bottom, you say, well, you know, how can it be so oversold? Well, I can assure you it can. It can stay oversold uh, a lot longer than than uh, uh, than we can imagine. So we need to see some pretty strong buying of the British pound coming in to this pair. The Aussie staying, you know, really not doing very much. You won't get an equal driver. The 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 difference between this pair and what David was showing on the Euro Aussie there, you did have this uh, that this if you like this equal uh, uh, move if you like in the pair where there's a strong buying in one and strong selling in the other. Now what that means is it doesn't mean you can't take uh, there isn't a potential trade here. Um, uh, what it means is that, that you have an more of an asymmetric move, still perfectly valid. And what you then have to look at is, you know, where is it heading to next? Where is the next stopping off point? And you have to decide whether because you have more of an asymmetric move, are you going to say, would well, you know what? I'm really, you know, I prefer to I prefer to see a setup where I've got more of a balance in the buying and the selling. Both are equally valid, but you have to decide, as I said, it goes back to what you feel most comfortable with uh, uh, as a trader, you know, taking the type of trade that you see, uh, you know, the setup that you that is presenting itself to you on the chart, which do you feel most comfortable with? Now, getting back to, um, do you want to talk about volatility and position size? Yeah, do you yeah. want to do that? I'm going to pass, yeah, is that okay? Do you want yeah. to do that? Um, David and I talked about, um, we talk about volatility all the time, and one of the ways that you can uh, handle that is through uh, your position sizes. In other words, if it's a volatile environment, you cut your position sizes down, um, using position sizes to either re-enter the market or, uh, um, you know, stay out, uh, uh, just manage your position using uh, position sizes. So can I pass that back to you, David? Is that okay? And I'm just uh, carry on and see what happens with the pound Aussie. Is there anything you want to say about this? Or are you happy no. with that? Fine. 